Welcome back to Bazaar Morning Call. Lots of stocks in focus this morning. So without wasting any time, let's go across to our research team. Bharti Airtel is the first stock on our radar. Reema has more on that. Reema, over to you. Hi, thanks so much for that. So what we've learned is that Bharti Airtel has gone ahead and increased the entry level pricing in two circles. Now, India has 22 circles. In a staggered fashion, over the last couple of months, Bharti Airtel had increased the entry level tariff prepaid plans in 17 circles, 17 out of 22. Now, they've taken it up one notch higher by extending it to two more circles. Those two circles are Maharashtra and Kerala, which basically means 19 out of 22 circles have seen the entry-level prepaid tariff increase uh, go up. Three circles are still left where they have to effect a price increase. But remember, these are entry-level uh, you know, prepaid tariffs. Uh, the increase in the ARPU, therefore, does not become very significant on an overall basis, although the price hike appears to be very steep because earlier, the entry-level tariff price was, I think, 99 rupees it now comes to 155 rupees so optically it's a very large increase and it will hurt uh, the you know people at the lower end but from the india mobile wireless revenue perspective according to morgan stanley the benefit will only be to the tune of 1.3 to 1.5 percent when you look at it on a pan india basis that's when they hike it across all the circles the bigger trigger will be when 4g tariffs go up because those are the higher plans the higher priced plans and when they go up by 10 percent 20 percent it directly flows through and boosts their uh, top line. So this is significant because Bharti has taken the first you know, step in uh, increasing the tariffs. They're extending it on a pan-India base. It's almost there. Competition is not followed, so we'll watch uh, the competition response. But this is what we've learned. Back to you. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for that, Rima. Well, I'm watching ACC as well as Ambuja Cements. Uh, you know, both their facilities in Himachal Pradesh will restart today. Remember, both these facilities were shut in the middle of December, December 15th odd, because there was a dispute with the uh, truck operators out there on the freight rates. Now, the new rates have come in there, and the new freight rates for the 12-ton truck, well, that's coming in a little bit lower, and also they have revised rates for the 24-ton truck. The management says that the revised rates will result in a 10 to 12 percent reduction in freight cost. Well, it's good for them, right? Because this constituted closer on 10 percent of the consolidated volumes of consolidated capacity, point number one. The second factor is both these two units were relatively more profitable. So that's good news as well. In the interim, they were producing at other units and sending it to Himachal Pradesh so that they don't lose their market share. So they'll save even on that front. So positive for both these two companies, but I'll be interested to see what happens to the other companies because there was a bit of a shortage that was playing out out there. And just a few days ago, there was a price increase in this region of around 10 rupees odd. So can this price increase hold out? Is demand strong enough? Well, we'll have to keep an eye out on that. But for the time being, ACC and Ambuja should open up well in the green. Okay, I'm also tracking two stocks this morning. One of them is Minda Corp. They had a conference call last evening at 5 p.m. and they have made it very clear that the investment that they're going to make in pre-call of around 15.7% is purely a financial investment. They also said they will continue to be just a minority shareholder with no special rights in pre-call and they are uh, exploring all other opportunities going ahead as well. So very, very clear that it will be purely a financial investment. Now, the long-term debt of the company stands at around 150-odd crores. The short-term debt at 350 crores. Post-investing in, post in pre-call also, their debt to equity will not be too high. They are comfortable with around 0.3 to 0.5 times. They are very bullish on the growth prospects in the instrument cluster segment and that's a segment in which pre-call has a majority market share globally. Um, so they've talked about how the two-wheeler analog cluster currently costs about 400 rupees a unit but now that there's this transition to digital clusters with respect to telematics, integration, etc., the kit value could go up to almost 4,000 rupees a unit from 400 rupees a unit. So that will be incrementally beneficial for Mindacorp. Hence, I'm going with green. They continue to focus on other inorganic growth opportunities, so they're not done with acquisitions just yet. They have cash flow generating ability to fund these acquisitions, and currently the balance sheet is very strong. So green for uh, Minda Corp. The other stock I'm looking at is Indigo. In fact, uh, all the aviation companies, because there was record air traffic that we saw in the month of February. In fact, domestic aviation operations hit a new high post-COVID with the average daily domestic air passengers in February increasing to around 420,000. Uh, this was from an average of around 410,000 in December. The number, in fact, peaked at uh, 4.44 lakhs in on the 19th of February. So higher corporate travel, 
travel, higher travel for marriage purposes, etc. have all resulted in a record high numbers there. So going with green for Indigo. Holiday, Sonia. It's a corporate <laughs> travel, marriages. <laughs> that yeah. time will come. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, <clears throat> things are looking uh, solid, aren't they? In terms of the uh, air travel numbers, as Sonia pointed out. More stocks with news flow. Vivek is here with that list. Vivek, hi, morning. Well, good morning. You know, keep an eye out on the entire power sector. Now, what's actually happened is that the Ministry of Power, in anticipation of the rising power demand, and especially, you know, this particular uh, year, in April 2023, they are anticipating a peak electricity demand of almost 229 gigawatts. Now, keeping that in mind, they have invoked Section 11, which basically says that all of the coal importing power plants will now have to operate at full capacity. Which are the stocks that will be impacted while the entire power pack will be positively impacted? Two stocks in particular, Adani Power as well as Tata Power, who have operations at the Mundra Coal Power Plant, which import coal, will be most positively impacted. In fact, uh, there is a past precedent to this particular Section 11 being impacted. From May to December 2022, uh, Tata Power and Adani Power's imported coal plant was allowed to do a complete pass-through of the cost, which impacted their EP positively. The other stock on the radar is Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, uh, Bloomberg reports that you know the company has gone ahead and tapped a global management consulting and a search agency firm called Egon Zender for the fresh CEO search that the company is currently looking at. And lastly, keep an eye out for GR Infra as well. The company has emerged as the lowest bid of two projects in Uttarakhand. Total project cost of a little over 3,600 crores. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Vivek. Uh, well, let's uh, get you a recap in case you missed out on these stocks. Stocks with positive news flow. There's Bharti, ACC, Ambuja, Tata Power, Adani Power, Kotak Mahindra Bank, GR Infra, Minda Corp, Precall and Interglobe Aviation. Well, guess what, guys? There are no stocks on our radar with negative news flow, but that can't be the case. Of course, uh, you know, there's more positive than negative news this morning. But let's get a quick handle on what's happening in the world of commodities. Manisha Gupta joins in for a roundup of all the action there. Manisha, good morning. Morning, Sonia. And somehow there are no negatives in commodities as well right now today in the morning. You look at the crude oil prices for a second straight day. We are trading in the positive here. There is optimism about China transportation demand. Also, the new Chinese refiners are now coming on stream supporting the prices here. Same is the case with the metals where markets are watching out for China National People Congress in the month of March and that it may announce further stimuluses. Also, the China new home sales group for the third straight week in 16 major cities. That seems to be supporting ferrous and non-ferrous metals. So whether it's zinc or copper, they are yet again trading near their multi-month highs. And for ferrous metals like iron ore and steel, we are trading at seven-month highs for both of these right now. All right, uh, <coughs> Manisha, thanks very much uh, for that. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, you know, Sonia, you were talking about uh, the fact that we have all green stocks. I was wondering how Minda would really open up because, I mean, they've said that, if you remember, last week we were saying that uh, if they, what's the logic of kind of going ahead with mm. this, right? I mean, they, it's, the promoters don't want to sell. And if this is just a pure, finan just a financial investment, I mean, what, I mean, what is a financial investment for for Minda Corp? I mean, why do this, essentially, yeah, yeah, is yeah, the question. Yeah. And I think that's something which uh, people perhaps may wonder. And if they wanted to build, if they're so <coughs> bullish on the instrument cluster business, they could have just invested that money in their own KPEX and perhaps build or their maybe own there's more to, yeah. Or the, maybe there's more in store, you know, because uh, uh, when the promoter of pre-call joined us, they said they had 16-17% uh, backing them. Will some part of that move to Minda Corp? Mm. Well, time will tell. But I recall Minda Corp, when they raised money in 2018, uh, the street was quite disappointed that they didn't do anything with the money, mm. you know, for the last a few years. And that's when December 22, when I, when I invited them and asked them, is inorganic route? He said, maybe, maybe not. Now they're doing something, but they don't have a majority. They don't have a both seat, you know. Yeah. So what are they trying to do with this? Yeah. Time will tell, what but I guess there's a bigger plan. You know, you're not at 26%. You're yeah. not at, you don't have yeah. control. I mean, yeah. so with this as a financial uh, investment, I mean, Maybe I don't there's know. a bigger plan. Uh, yeah. But, I'm you sure know, Minda themselves are saying so. this is purely a financial yeah. investment now. Yeah. So at yeah. this stage, they're saying it's not yeah. like pre-call. If pre-call doesn't want to sell, Minda is saying this is a financial investment. Yeah. But there may be an act too, which we don't know. But I'm sure there's something in store, because if you look at both the businesses, they're so synergistic. And it, you know, uh, Precall has, a, it's the second largest player globally. Yeah. So yeah. if Minda wants to scale up in yeah. the in the, in that yeah. instrument cluster space, I guess they just need to perhaps go ahead and, you know, yeah. raise their You know, uh, our colleague Sonal Sachdev had uh, yeah. put out a piece over the weekend uh, looking at uh, Minda Corp's own history, operating mm. performance, etc. And it's uninspiring. I mean, yeah. over the last 10, yeah. 15 years. So, I mean, the, the simple point is, I mean, you know, uh, their own business needs to come up to a certain yeah. level and not acquire yeah. other businesses. I mean, that's one way to look at it. But we'll see. Uh, so that's uh, Minda and Preek, all the story.
continues, maybe uh, it kind of takes a bit of a backseat with the clarification of the con call yesterday. For now, we'll take a break. We have Prakash Devan join us uh, and uh, we'll kind of uh, pose some of those questions with him. He looks at the auto space closely. And of course, we also have the management of KC International to talk about their uh, new auto wins. Stay tuned uh, for those conversations in just a bit.